Yep, you can create visual effects and layer videos on iPhone and iPad. And I'm just kind of clearing this up because number one, I'm wanting to shout this from the rooftops a little bit, but also whenever I tell people this, I'm sort of met with some skepticism every now and then, which is understandable. It's doable, but it's not common knowledge and doing so requires following a lot of specific workarounds that are predicated on very specific shooting and editing conditions. So today I'm going to show you one way to apply your visual effects to your footage on mobile, and that's through video layering. And you can do all that here and even here. I have a video of rendered visual effects that I've also created on the iPad, and I'm going to use that as an overlay for my camera footage. The app that I'll be using is Video Leap, which is free on the App Store. I'm wanting this to be the definitive deep dive into mobile video layering, so here we go. The first thing you're going to need to do when you approach video layering in any capacity on mobile is make sure that your footage is stable. That way you can apply your effects easily because if you're moving around your footage a lot, it's going to be really hard to track that effect that you're wanting to apply to the footage because there's no motion tracking available. To put this in perspective, every single shot that I filmed for my short film was filmed on a tripod. And I did this because number one, I was shooting it myself, but also I knew that I wanted to apply lots of visual effects and I needed the camera to be still so that I can just easily apply those effects really quickly, minimize the amount of time I needed to edit, and also that way I didn't have to like track the motion. Yes, keyframing is a thing that you can do with Video Leap, but it's gonna be a little tricky to do that and pull that off well in a really quick time frame. So it's just gonna really depend on what you're doing for your project and what you're really wanting to accomplish with your visual effects. Okay, so opening Video Leap just brings you to a blank project, and I can tap the plus button and then select the album that I want to pull from for my footage, just footage for Video Leap, and then I can just multi-select these clips, and boom, I'm in here, and I have my two clips that I am going to want to overlay. And I have a variety of controls at the bottom. There are a couple of features that are limited to the pro version, but for the most part, you can accomplish everything here with the free version, and you can layer up to three video tracks in the free version and export in full 4K. If you want more features, you can pay for the subscriptions and stuff. For this video, I'm only layering two video clips just to keep things simple. So in this first clip, I have like my hand, which is supposed to be controlling fractal effects, which are in this other clip. And I just want to overlay that. So I'm going to tap the clip that I want to overlay. And right now you can see like all these controls at the bottom. You have filters, opacity, adjust, transform, all that stuff. None of this stuff is important yet until I click the mixer button. Once I've clicked the mixer button, now I've stacked that layer on top of the previous layer. And by dragging this layer, I can now control where it fits on the timeline and now it's actually overlaid. But you can't see the clip that it's supposed to be overlaid on top of. So right now I need to go into the blending section. And by clicking the blending section, I now have blending modes, which will determine how the video is overlaid on top of the clip. And I have things like overlay, multiply, but I'm gonna go with screen. By clicking the screen button, I now have that clip directly laid on top of that background clip. And since my effects were on a black background, this means that I was able to seamlessly layer without having to erase anything because that black background is kind of removed the minute I click the screen option. If I wanna adjust the strength visibility, this is where I go into the opacity and I can click the opacity button here, which is at 100, and I can tweak that. So I can adjust how visible and how prominent those effects are on top of the clip here. I can also click the mask button and through masking, I can erase parts of that effect layer. So if I click the linear button, now I've created a portion of the video that is erased. You have things like radial and rectangular masking tools. And these masking tools are nice if you have a specific area of your layer that you want to erase or that you want to highlight. Then let's say I want to rearrange the layer. By dragging with two fingers, I can seamlessly rearrange this. I can scale it, I can resize it however I'd like. I can also click the transform button and also flip it and mirror it. I can adjust the speed of the effect if I want to. So if I want the effect to be a bit snappier, I can adjust that speed easily. I can reverse it, I can arrange, I can even split and duplicate these things. You also have the chroma key setting, which is not something I use all the time, but you can see kind of what it's, up, what it's doing to the effect. This would be helpful if let's say you had a custom background that you made, like if you made a matte painting or something, then you had separate footage that was shot on a green screen that you wanted to chroma key and you wanted to erase that background easily. You could do that with this tool and I think the, I think it would work pretty well. I haven't tried that before, but 
that's a nice option to have here. You can even customize the threshold. You can use the picker to choose where you're sampling from. Uh, this is just really cool to have access to here. Again, I don't think enough people know that you can do this. Like, so that's super exciting to me. You have some adjustment tools. I can adjust the brightness, uh, the contrast, the exposure. This is all great for me if I want to really refine the effect and really get it to fit naturally in the scene. So before I get to the next step, I'm just going to drag the clip over to where exactly I want it to be applied. And then I'm going to split the background clip just so that I don't have a bunch of unnecessary footage and I can trim that there. Now it's out of alignment. So I just have to drag that back into alignment. Very easy process. Just going to chop that up a little bit more here. And actually now you can see that I have some transitions too, if I want to apply transitions to the project and to the different video layers. Since I have my background video layer and my overlaid effects layer, we move into the next step, which is keyframing. And keyframing, for those who don't know, is essentially creating automations for your video clips. And you can keyframe in Video Leap by tapping this like diamond plus button over here in the bottom right hand corner and now I've created a keyframe. And so I'm gonna to scrub to a separate part of the timeline here. I'm gonna create another keyframe and then I'm gonna go some other place in the timeline and I'm gonna just lower the opacity. And so now you can see that I've just created automation that directly affects the way it looks visually in the project. And this is super interesting for any kind of project you're doing because if you want to create uh, real-time changes to your effect that match your video, you can do this convincingly with keyframing and this can really just be like that thing that takes your video from cool to like really cool. This is something that I would encourage people to not be intimidated by. For this project though, I don't really need this surging effect. So by highlighting a keyframe, I can tap that same diamond button, but now it has a subtract icon. And by tapping that, I've removed that keyframe. And I'm gonna do this for both of the other uh, keyframes as well. So those keyframes are gone now. Now I wanna show keyframing through scale and arrangement. So I want this like effect to kind of transform as I'm moving it, and I want the uh, effect to kind of move with my hand. So I'm going to create a keyframe here. As the clip extends, I want the effect to kind of like move slightly. And you have to be really precise with it, uh, with the two finger drag, just so that it like fits well with what you're trying to do. It's not gonna look perfect at first, it's gonna require some trial and error, but if you're willing to show up and meet the project where it's at, you can create something interesting. So if I play this back, now it's got this weird dynamic to it where it really feels like it's responsive to the background video layer. In the short film, it doesn't even do this, but just by tinkering here, I kind of can see a new possibility. You can also keyframe adjustments, and masks and things and by doing this you have so much control over what you have in your project and this can really give your video projects an edge whenever and wherever you're sharing them and having that kind of control on mobile really can enable you to do some very creative things with this program especially as you start bringing other programs to the mix and as you start generating your own effects so if i like what i have i can click the share button and save in 4k and 24 frames per second and then we're good to go so that's basically video layering in a nutshell and i wanted to keep it as simple as possible by just layering two clips and only showing a few of the features in video leap because there's so much more you can do and i'm really just scratching the surface like i mentioned in my ipad creative apps video this is stuff that you usually need a computer for so the fact that you can do this on the iPhone or iPad is incredibly freeing because it means that there is a very low cost of entry, I think, for people that want to get their foot in the door, try video editing out and try this visual effects stuff out a little bit and kind of learn the basic principles. And if you're someone like me who gets frustrated with all the different controls on the computer and like having to like dial in settings because I can't just manually do it, having that tactile functionality here and being able to touch the effect and like shift it around with my hand, I mean, that's just so nice. In future videos, I'm gonna be showing how to create and generate visual effects manually on mobile and also how Video Leap fits into that process. And I'll definitely be covering more aspects of Video Leap in depth. So let me know if you would like to see anything like that or if there are any questions that you have about that process. But that being said, there's so much you can do here. And I think people oftentimes get hung up on what you can't do that they sometimes miss like what 
is actually doable. When it comes to visual effects in general, 3D is really where this needs to improve. And I think we could see some improvement. Like if you could just let me rig the models from those free model posing apps, if you could like let me do that and start, oh my gosh, I'm getting off track here and I could nerd about this stuff all day, but this is inspiring to me because in the process, I can find and unlock new creative possibilities, and then I can potentially innovate in the space. And I think with mobile video in general, this is still very much an emerging space. So I think that's one of the exciting things about the prospect of getting into that field if you're looking into doing so. There's never been a better time to dive into this stuff because it's free if you have one of these or if you have one of these. So I highly recommend Video Leap for starters and also just getting into this creative stuff if it's something that's interesting to you and it's something that you're like, yeah, I think I might wanna try that. And as iPad OS enters the mix and we start seeing more like innovations and more improvements with mobile tech, I feel like those creative possibilities are just gonna just like explode. And like there's gonna be so many more things that are gonna be uh, available to all different creators. So I feel like now's a good time to jump on that if you're interested because when those things hit, you'll be ready and prepared for them. But yeah, that about does it for this video. So thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll catch y'all later.